Um, good morning. The wonders of modern technology. It is wonderful to see you all here. Hmm. Welcome to the Washington Ethical Society. I'm Judy Myers. My pronouns are she and her, and I am the officiant today. We're here for hybrid platform. Yay, hybrid. Whether you're on Zoom, here in the hall, or watching or listening to the recording later, welcome to everyone. We are one community, unified across time and space, as we gather to affirm our values and commit to a better world. If you're on Zoom, please check the chat for tips and a welcome from today's Zoom chat host. And in a moment, I'll read greetings from our online attendees in just a few moments. Um, In-person visitors, please stop by the welcome table after platform today to speak to a greeter or to our membership coordinator, Maceo Thomas. Online visitors, we invite you to send an email to Maceo uh, at maceot at ethicalsociety.org. If you are a visitor watching this recording later, this invitation is for you as well. You can fill out a connection form at tiny.cc slash westconnects. I'll now read a few of the greetings that folks have written into the chat. Online friends, while I'm doing that, you might want to get a candle to light during our candle lighting, which will take place in just a moment. So let's take a look. Ooh, we have all kinds of things going on in the chat. Yay. So let me take a look. Um, please be sure to have your settings in the chat uh, to everyone so that we can all see what you are typing. Um, Robin says, good morning from the West office where she is. She is here working. Um, so Patty Absher says, good morning all. And Joe says, good morning and welcome all. Joe is our chat hostess, host this morning. Um, and who else? Adam Briskin Limehouse says, good morning. And Da, 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 da. Brian and Leanne also say good morning. Peter Bishop, good morning, everyone. Robin also says shout out to Donna and Alex, who are brilliantly greeting folks at the West Front Door this morning. Thanks to all of our volunteers making today happen. Michelle says good morning from Muggy, I guess maybe Pensacola. I don't see an S in there, but I think it's Pensacola. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. Sue Smith, good morning all, and, 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 Rajesh says good morning all, sorry, this is scrolling, um, and a reminder that there's a closed captioning option on Zoom that can be turned on or off, and that the chat will stay open through much of the platform service and it'll close during the address itself and then it'll reopen so that you can uh, participate in the conversation. And Sue Jacobson says, good morning, everyone. Marsha and Richard Gould, hi from Minnesota. Always exciting. All right. So, it is lovely to see people participating from afar. It's very exciting. So it is good to connect and to share this time together. Once you're prepared, I invite you to settle in wherever you are as we continue to gather. I am so pleased to welcome our guest speaker, the Reverend Kimberly 
Divas, I'm sorry. I gotta... If only I could pronounce her name, Divas, to her second platform address this year. When she spoke in January, Wes was still conducting platform presentations primarily via Zoom. And it's a real pleasure to have her here today in person, along with limited in-person attendees. Um, Reverend, or Rev, we'd say, Kimberly Debus is a Unitarian Universalist community minister based in Tacoma Park, Maryland, inspiring an artful and art-filled faith. She consults with congregations and religious professionals around the world. She is affiliated with the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, Nebraska, and has previously served at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, as well as congregations in on Long Island and Key West. Welcome back, Kimberly. Yay. We will begin our platform with some music from the West Chorus. Let's see, hi. I invite the choir to chorus to come up. We are in a time of transition in our world, what Joanna Macy calls the great turning. And this song calls us together and reminds us of who we are and whose we are. <laughs> We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round the ten leaves fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. In the time that Thank you. 
Each week, we read our statement of purpose as a reminder of our shared values. If you are interested in taking a turn to read the statement of purpose, you can sign up at tiny.cc slash read SOP. Today's reader is Sarah Morris, a member of the Board of Trustees. Sarah. Washington Ethical Society is a humanistic congregation that affirms the worth of every person. We strive through our relationships to elicit the best in the human spirit. With faith in human goodness, we appreciate each person's unique capacities. We joyfully celebrate together and support each other through life. We nurture a sense of reverence and responsibility for each other and the earth. We warmly invite you to join our community of children and adults as we work for a world where love and justice cross all borders. Thank you, Sarah. If you're joining us from afar and have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now as Sarah lights our community candle and I share our candle lighting words. May we kindle within us the warmth of compassion, the light of understanding, and the fire of commitment to build a brighter future for all. Thank you. Each week, we ring this chime in solidarity with people around the world. Today, I am particularly mindful that amidst the turmoil all around us, we have the joyous opportunity to celebrate Pride Month. Yay. As we listen to the chime, let us remember our connection to each other and the world around us. Let us open our hearts to compassion for those who suffer. And let us commit ourselves to the work that calls for our love. Let us enter into a time of meditation. You may wish to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Relax into this moment. Consider your breath. Notice the feeling as you take in a breath that is nourishing for your body. Notice the feeling of cherishing that breath within you. Notice the feeling as you release your breath into the world. Take a moment to notice and appreciate your breath. We breathe in with gratitude for oxygen from trees and seaweed and algae. We breathe out with gratitude for the planet we share. We breathe in treasuring this moment of mindfulness. We breathe out open to the silence and to the music that follows.
sung us around so we'll sing it here together the side of that there is a love It is surprising how kingly I'm getting still in these first few times with other people in a room like this singing songs about love and connection. Um, these are those moments when you don't quite realize how much we missed because of the pandemic. And what an honor it is to be able to present this and sing not only in a room, but also online where we still get to connect with one another. And so to those who are watching either in the present or in the future, thank you. Sing along, learn these songs. In the introduction to select hymns with tunes text, by John Wesley, the co-founder of Methodism in England. He offers his seven rules for congregational singing. It includes such rules as learn these two, any others, and sing them exactly as they're printed here without altering or mending them at all. And if you have learned them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. <laughs> He encourages people to sing all and let not a single degree of weakness hinder you. 
You are to sing lustily and with good courage, and of course, modestly too. Sing with the energy with which you sang the songs of Satan. And do not bawl. I plan on doing a fair bit of bawling to the songs of Satan when I get back in my car, right? He also advises that we sing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before nor stay behind it, but attend close to the leading voices and move therewith exactly as you can and take care not to sing too slow. This drawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy, and it is high time to drive it out from us and sing all of our tunes just as quick as we did at first. And finally, he encourages us to sing spiritually, which we might interpret as sing with feeling. Now, obviously, some of these rules are a bit much. I mean, Here's the thing. I sang all 490 hymns out of the two Unitarian Universalist hymnals some time back, and I did it so y'all don't have to. <laughs> because yes, I sang some favorites and found some hidden gems, and also I found some that I am glad I never had sung and never will again. Some of what I learned, though, is that while there are many older songs that are meaningful and beautiful, inspiring. Some of them are terribly outdated, showing us that the moral arc of the universe has actually bent toward justice. Because lyrics that in some cases are only 17 years old already reveal how much we have learned and grown, how much more we understand about gender, sexuality, race, oppression, class, and disability. Some of the songs we sing, some of the songs in those hymnals that I know you use too, are out of date. Even songs we gathered during the civil rights movement and the labor movement and the environmental movement and the women's rights and the gay rights movements, these songs are out of date. And if our music is out of date and stagnant, then maybe so are we. It matters what we sing. Now, this is a lesson I learned a few years ago from a friend who comes from Estonia, a small country in the Balkans in Europe. It's very close to Finland. There are only about a million people in Estonia. It is tiny, but it's beautiful with lots of ports, rolling hills, and lots of rich farmland. Now, maybe the first thing I learned about Estonians is how much they love music. It's been central to Estonian culture for centuries. And although Estonia is one of the smallest countries in the world, it nonetheless has one of the largest collections of folk songs. Estonians have historically used music as a political weapon as well. It is said that this, that song was used in protest of the German invaders of the 13th century and also in resistance to Russian occupation under Peter the Great in the 18th. In 1869, Estonians started a song festival called Lalupidu, where choirs from around the country come together every five years or so to sing for days. Nearly 30,000 singers uh, can be on stage at one time, and over 100,000 people come each day to listen. And now this continued even in times of war. During World War II, 1939 to 1945, Estonia was occupied by the Nazis and then by the Russians. And in the process of becoming the USSR, or the Soviet Union, these, a group of 15 neighboring countries were invaded and claimed by Russia so that they could form what they thought was a communist utopia. Countries 
didn't go willingly. And those who spoke out against the Soviet Union were often banished to work camps or sometimes killed. Everyone had to speak in support of the Soviet Union. There was no free speech. Now, one of the things they wanted Soviet, the thing about the Soviets is they wanted everyone to be Russian because they thought everyone should be Russian. So all the music was Russian, the official language was Russian, the food was Russian, the schools were Russian. Even new citizens were moved in to apartments and houses from Russia. Pretty much anything that was Estonian was removed and replaced with Russian things. So imagine you're a sovereign nation like, oh, I don't know, Ukraine? And suddenly someone decides that you're not sovereign but are actually a territory of their country. And as they wreak havoc with tanks and bombs, they start to move Russians into the houses left unoccupied by those fleeing violence. Well, that would be weird, right? And pretty terrifying. And for reasons all historians and analysts, yeah, let me start that one again. Now, for reasons historians and analysts can only explain, the formation of the Soviet Union seemed less newsworthy or differently newsworthy. But as in every other now Soviet states, everything was in Russian. Even the music in Estonia was Russian. When it came to the song festival, all of the songs had to be in Russian and in support of the Soviet Union, something we call propaganda. And despite having people making sure everything was in Russian, in 1947, they allowed in one Estonian composition called Muisa Ma on Minu Arm, or Land of My Fathers, Land That I Love. Now, this was something special because the song composed by Gustav Ernesox used a famous and beloved Estonian poem by Lydia Koidula. Here's the song. was nothing that the Soviets could do but invite the composer on stage to conduct the choir for yet another encore and pretend that they meant to allow this all along. Muisa Ma and Minu Arm was never forbidden again. It gave people hope. They weren't sure that they could be free, but maybe life could be a little better if they could remember who they were, Estonian, not Russian. In the early 1980s, when the Soviet Union was showing signs of crumbling, their leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, allowed for a bit more freedom, like freedom of speech. But you know what happens when you give people freedom of speech? They use it. Soon people were speaking out and more people could speak out, realizing they could be free. 
they remembered they were Estonian first. They kept singing Melissa Ma and Minu Arm and other songs like Estonian I am and Estonian I shall be. And they kept talking. When Soviet troops threatened violence, which they did a lot, Estonians would gather to face the soldiers and they would sing at them. And the soldiers could not fight against them. So blood was not shed. In 1988, activist and artist Heinz Valk noticed this and coined the term singing revolution. We started a revolution with a smile and a song, he later wrote. And while it was hard, and the story way too long and complex for the short platform, eventually the Estonians were successful. And Estonia was one of the first of those 15 countries to declare its own independence. Singing their songs, was the fuel for change. This was their power. This was something they shared from heart to heart, from family to family, from community to community. They have their freedom today because of their singing, a nonviolent way to assert who they were and claim their identity, their inherent worth, their dignity. And Muisa Ma continues to be one of their favorite national songs sung every festival at Lalupidu. Side note, I've done this talk, I've shared this story at least a dozen times. I'm not Estonian, and yet that gets me every time. It matters. It matters that we sing. The Estonians sing all the time. They sing before they can talk. They sing in public places. They sing together everywhere. Here in the United States, we don't sing together much. A singer, writer, and educator, you say Barnwell says, we see music as an art form, not a tool for community building. But at its best, that's what singing together is, a tool for building community. We used to sing together like the Estonians still do, at school, scouts, camp, union meetings, bars, and yes, church. <laughs> We used to sing everywhere with people we knew and people we didn't. And when we sing together in harmonies unintended and intended, we start connecting. We vibrate sound and energy inside our bodies, but also around us. We share our humanity with one another. And it's hard at first because we're not used to this kind of singing. We're not used to being this kind of vulnerable. But soon we get used to it. And as any chorus member can tell you, it's easier to sing when you're singing with others. It's a lot easier, as John Wesley advises, to sing lustily and with good courage. It matters that we sing together, and I promise you we will. But as I said, earlier, it also matters what we sing together. Remember how the Estonians started singing Melissa Ma to remind them of who they are and whose they are? We can and should do that. Dr. Barnwell talks about how important it was to sing in the civil rights movement. She notes that not only do our songs speak of our issues and our intentions, singing together bonds us and protects us. And those who hear us singing are also changed. She notes in a TEDx talk from 2015 that watching the movie Selma reminded her of this power. That the cops waiting on the other side of the Edmund Pettus Bridge didn't know how many people were crossing because the sound of the singing reached them before the people did. She also notes that we didn't sing much during the Occupy movement. 
We don't sing at Black Lives Matter protests or March for Our Lives. We didn't sing at the Women's March. In fact, I remember some colleagues and I trying to get people to sing at the March in New York City. Not only did people not know the songs, they didn't know how to sing together. I figure it's probably part and parcel of our commercialization of singing. And yeah, you can see how as music has become more commercialized and turned competitive, it is harder and harder to feel like anybody can sing. And technology and cultural divides have led us to push aside this part of our humanity. We are losing the tool that best carries our identities, our hopes and our dreams and our fears and our wounds and our cultures and our hearts. These voices connected in song. Now, we could go back and learn all the old songs like John Wesley wants us to, but I think that's counterintuitive. The old songs got us here, but there are new songs that we can learn together and sing together. Songs we can carry with us that are learned in the oral tradition, that are passed on, spread, shared. We've already done a couple of them today, songs that I think speak to this moment, knowing who we are and whose we are, remembering the love that holds us as we enter this moment. So what's next? Acting in love, living our ethics out loud in the ways we begin. How do we begin? Well, Melanie Damore offers this wonderful song called One Foot. And yes, it's the kind of song I imagine can be sung by dozens and maybe hundreds of us as we protest and march against discrimination. So the chorus goes like this. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. Don't you give up. Keep moving on. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes, don't you despair, look up ahead, the path is there, you gotta put one foot in front of the other, and lead with love, put one foot in front of the other, and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. Lead with love. The other. And lead with love. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. And I'm scared too. And I'm scared too. But here I am. Right next to you, right next to you. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. One foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and 
matters that we're not alone. This is not only a song we can't sing alone, but it's a song that reminds us we are not alone as we do this work. <sighs> Boy, does it matter. Over the last few months, we've been dealing with people who are hell-bent on not just telling us our lives, our bodies, our knowledge, and our very humanity is wrong, but are trying to legislate our humanity out of existence. And frankly, I may look nice. I'm done being nice about this. When we first heard about the news of the draft decision that would affect the end row, I struggled to find the words. But time and thought has helped. And I have new words now and a song in response. We know that just down the road and in state houses across the nation, there are piles of legislation ready to, or already, outlawing reproductive control. And they are both offensive and draconian. And to be clear, this is not just a women's issue. These aren't just trans issues. These aren't just gay, queer, differently abled issues. These are everyone's issues. Reproductive choice is an issue for all who can get pregnant. It is an issue for all those who can cause someone to get pregnant. It is an issue for the poor, for the historically marginalized, for the immigrants, for the incarcerated, the young and the old. And while the Supreme Court decision is still in draft form, it portends other possible restrictions to our rights as human beings. It goes hand in hand with the anti-trans legislation that leg legislates hate and discrimination, which goes hand in hand with other rights, speech, marriage, voting, access, and more. This is everyone's issue, the people around you, you who might be straight or cisgender or men, these are your issues too. We need you to speak out for choice. We need you to talk about your role in healthy, safe, and desired reproduction. We need you to not just see people for who they are, but talk about their humanity as vital and inherent as your own. And we need you to listen to the stories of those around you who are afraid and anxious about their futures. All of this is so much bigger than a single issue. This is what, this is about all of us, what it means to have autonomy in a free society. This is about dignity and worth. This is about democratic process. This is a moment that is calling us to put our ethics and our morals into practice. This is a call to a revolution to claim back that which is so important to us for the good of all. And we need to talk about it. And if we're going to be effective, we do actually need to sing about it. We need to use the power of our voices to declare and know on certain terms that we are free and whole and strong in whatever body we have. Shireen Amini offers us this song is in three parts. Actually, Perry, if you would help me hold down part A here. Part one, A one, I don't know, you know, the first one. I am free in my body. I'm free in my body. I'm free in my body. Nothing can take that away from me. I'm free in my body. I'm free in my body. I'm free in my body. 
Nothing can take that away from me. Karen's going to keep, keep that going. Karen's going to help us with the second part. She all can do it. I'm free in my body. Nothing but free. Nothing but free. Nothing but free. Nothing can take that away from me. Nothing but in my body. You guys get the da da da. I'm free in my body. I'm free in my body. Nothing can take that away from me. I'm free. I'm going to change this strong. I'm strong in my body. I'm strong in my body. I'm strong in my body. In my body. Nothing can take that away. One more time. Strong. In my body, I'm strong. In my body, I'm strong. In my body, now watch me. I'm strong. I am strong. Imagine that out on the streets. Imagine I am free in my body and you can use other words i'm loved i am whole i'm strong in my body i'm here is a strong that has strength and has power and it declares in no uncertain terms what we mean to say and we need these hard strong righteous songs and Sometimes we need songs that simply affirm who we are and grounds us in what motivates us. So I'm going to invite us again to sing the, a joyful piece by Debbie Margie Brown. So we're going to start on this side this time, and I'm going to ask my helpers to come up. Let me just get a... Yeah. All right. So the first part, I guess y'all ish. Ish. Um goes like this. Your love is enough. You are everything. Your love is enough. You are everything. Keep that going. And I'm going to take a small section of you. Each of the, the second part, and then you're going to have to hold it down. Because I don't have anybody who's going to help you. You are And everything's a part of you, and everything's a part of me, and everything's a part of you and me. Everything's a part of you and everything's a part of you and everything's a part of you and me. Folks here. You're the light of the candle. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the candle. You're the light of the candle. Here we go. Only love, only love, only love, only love. Only, only love, only love, only love, only, only, only love. Only love, only love, 
only love, only love, only, 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 only love, 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 Beautiful. I love that one. Your love is enough. Everything is a part of everything. We already are the light we need. We have these incredible, powerful messages that counteract the hate we face every day. We must take every advantage of every tool we have to be heard and known and seen. We cannot be stagnant. We can't go back to the way things were. Instead, we must claim the authority of our ethics and our morals, and we must raise our voices. We must claim the love that calls us actively draw the circle of love wide. When we sing songs that tell of our intentions, and not just what we used to be, but who we are now and who we hope to be, then we create our own singing revolution. Estonians were called by liberty, community, and commitment, and they fought a revolution with a smile and a song. Let us fight a revolution with our songs. And it's not always easy to start. As the Unitarian Everett, Edward Everett Hale said, I am only one, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something I can do. And sometimes that one thing we can do is start and be the first voice. This is the sound of one voice. One spirit, one voice. The sound of one who makes a choice. This is the sound of one voice. This is the sound of one voice. This is the sound of voices too. The sound of me singing with you, helping each other to make it through. This is the sound of voices do. This is the sound of voices do. This is the sound of voices three. Singing together in harmony. Surrendering to the mystery. This is the sound of voices three. This is the sound of voices three. This is the sound of us. Singing with love and will to trust. Leave the rest behind.
Thank you so much, Beverly. Kimberly. <laughs> that was my uh, my evil twin. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Well, this is the time when we add our own voices to the morning, sharing our reflections on the platform or what resonates in our own lives. For our online participants, I invite you to share in the Zoom chat or in the comments if you're watching the recording later. I will start with Zoom comments. Um, if folks have had an opportunity to write something in, we'll accept some comments at the microphone also from in-person attendees um, and then return to Zoom participants at the end. So, hmm, let's see what folks have to say. Hmm, goodness gracious. All kinds of good stuff. Um, and in fact, things that I missed while, uh, I don't know, we were singing and listening to Kimberly or whatever her name is. <laughs> no, that was very beautiful and I apologize. Okay, so let's see, what have we, what have we? Um, well, we had Minnesota, we had all kinds of good stuff. Um, so, um, Laura Steele had commented that she liked the wide view of everyone. It is really wonderful that uh, we have an opportunity to, as Kimberly said, both be together and far and wide and close and hmm. Robin, uh, so Rajesh says that he uh, is enjoying my relaxed style. <laughs> well, there you go, that's Judy. I am who I am. Um, so uh, Peter Bishop says, Thank you to the tech team who struggles with the artificial intelligence, which we all understand is in fact artificial stupidity. <laughs> I studied AI and worked to give AI workers the tools they need, and I had hoped it would be less idiotic than it's turned out to be. Um, Joe says, well put, Peter. Um, so uh, let's see. There are lots of comments that don't really need to be, you know, they're just tech stuff. Um, so Adam says, love the singing. Yes, very, very sweet. Um, Patty says, one foot in front of the other is a song we should sing out as a call to join the thousands of marchers from all over the country to speak loudly for justice, for everything, for goodness, for, oh, goodness. Um, 
So Peter Bishop shares also, music has always been very important to me. I think we heard some of why it should be. There's been some singing in demonstrations, but not as many important songs as I remember from the protests of my youth, indeed. Um, and Adam says, one of the places I've always felt out of place was with older activists, activist folks who knew and could sing together. We, we need to definitely fix that. I wanted to know the songs, but felt uncomfortable asking them to teach me. Thank you, Adam, for um, voicing that. It is so much. Hmm. And if there are folks here in the hall who would like to come and share their comments, please do. Perry? Hi, Perry Biter, he, him. You may be forgiven for thinking you've heard enough from me already today, <laughs> but uh, I think it would be remiss of me as one of the ringleaders of the chorus to fail to, first of all, thank Kimberly for her leadership. And also to maybe uh, go from or to and. Yes, music is a tool for community building. Yes, music is art. Yes, music is fun. Singing together is fun. And Adam and anybody else who wants to learn songs, come join the chorus. A couple people have done that this spring, and it's been lovely, wonderful having new folks with us. We're a community of 300 people, folks. We should have a bigger chorus. <laughs> if you have ever thought about wanting to sing, please get in touch with me. We will be, you know, taking our usual hiatus vacation break in the summer, but we will be getting back together probably, I would hope, in like mid to late August to start preparing for September, and we would love to have you with us and joining in the fun. Jeff? Good afternoon, good morning, everybody, Jeff. You all here. Two things. Uh, first, Kimberly, that was very nice. You have a lovely voice. And I really was, I, I'm just one of those people you see who doesn't sing. Um, because I was raised and the idea was just implanted in my consciousness by my dad and my sister, who said, if you can't do anything well, don't do it at all. Um, so I don't sing. I'm very self-conscious about my lack of musical ability. And so if you had directed me to sing, I would have said, no, 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 no. Um, so I don't sing unless, um, I'm in my cups, so to speak. And then it's me and Jimmy rushing. Um, the second thing I mentioned, which was particularly, uh, poignant to me is that I have been to Estonia. Uh, the uh, capital, Tallinn, is uh, a beautiful uh, city. Uh, uh, the older city is uh, Germanic in its architecture and layout probably owing to Estonia's inclusion in the Hanseatic League. Uh, uh, Estonia, along with the uh, uh, republics of uh, Latvia and Lithuania, were annexed by the USSR in 1940, and then, uh, but then by the Germans following that country's invasion in June 1941. When I was there in 1979, you could still see scars of the war. Um, now, according to the Soviet constitution, there was some nominal leeway given for self-expression by the various union republics, but that was like really nominal. Um, the, uh, the railway coaches of Soviet railways all had the uh, names of the 15 or so union republics in their own language, but that's about as far as they would go. Um, and as a matter of fact, one of the other things about the USSR was that no matter where you were, if you were at Tallinn or even Vladivostok, all the clocks would be set to Moscow time. Um, so that was at the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Been there, done that, almost got arrested for espionage. Lynn? <laughs> almost. 
Hi, I'm Lynn Cox. My pronouns are they, them. I am the outgoing interim leader here at the Washington Ethical Society. And I just want to affirm what Kimberly said about permission to learn and relearn. Um, so the uh, WES is part of UUSJ, which supports the Poor People's Campaign. And when we had a Poor People's Campaign mobilization in December, I ran up to our contingent and they're like, Lynn, you can sing. I'm like, I forgot how. I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. So, but, <laughs> but, you know, with some forgiveness, we, we sang together and got our people together. And then everybody who needed to find us could find us. But I wanted, I wanted to say is the Poor People's uh, Moral March and Annual and, and Mass Assembly is this coming Saturday. And I think there's going to be an announcement about where and when if you want to join our contingent. But if you go online to the Poor People's Campaign website, they have a songbook that you can download. So, Adam, you won't be unprepared. Uh, anyway, so um, just wanted to say that it's okay to learn and it's okay to relearn. And definitely the elders want to teach us. We want to teach you something like that. It's that we, you thing. My name is Denise, she, her pronouns. I feel like I am the poster child for Perry's pitch to join the chorus. <laughs> like Jeff, I was always kind of informed that I wasn't a very good singer and therefore I should refrain <laughs> from singing so as not to offend anybody. <laughs> but I went through the requisite middle school chorus. I think that was the last time I sang in a group up until a couple months ago, but I started to feel like singing with other people was something that was missing in my life. So thank you to Perry and to Kimberly and everybody else for kind of welcoming me in. This has been a great experience and it is, it's fun. It's very meaningful and it's also just plain fun. So thank you. Okay, and uh, we've got a couple of other things, uh, including um, Adam uh, saying, yes, 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 songbook, yes. <laughs> and maybe there were a couple other things here. Um, Lynn, that's, that's excellent news. Um, what else do we have? Um, sorry, trying to, you know. Thanks, Robin, and uh, yes, the, the uh, sound tech things. So maybe it's just as well that there were problems with the sound. Maybe you had problems when I was making. <laughs> anyway, um, um, this was thanking um, our John Lika and um, John says that our new motto should be wonderfully imperfect. Yeah. That's what we are. Yes, yes. Adam is very excited and provided, in fact, a link to in the chat to the Poor People's Campaign songbook. Woo yippee! So, um, and we can certainly make that available. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your comment. And um, thank you, everyone, to sh who shared their comments. So, um, and just as we share our perspectives in this community, so too do we share our resources and gifts. Here at WES, we split the Sunday collection between our own operating budget and a fund dedicated to justice and compassion. This month, half of the offering is dedicated to the Wanda Alston Foundation. The mission of the Wanda Alston Foundation, or WAF, is to eradicate homelessness and poverty for LGBTQ youth between the ages of 18 and 24. The Wanda Alston Foundation opened its doors in 2008 as the only housing program in Washington, D.C., solely dedicated to offering pre-independent transitional living and support services to homeless or at-risk LGBTQ youths ages 18 to 24 in all eight wards. Let's take a moment to prepare to respond to the invitation to generosity. If you're someone who gives by text or are in front of a device, 
where you can navigate to the donation page on the West website. Get out your phone or tablet or navigate to that page now. If you're here in person, there's a basket at the back of the hall to receive your gift. Half of your undesignated gift will go to Wes and the other half will go to the Share the Plate partner for the month. I will pause for a moment so that all who are able can prepare to respond with generosity. Also on the slide, you should see the number to give by text, which is 202-335-1885. And you can also make a gift online through the donate button on our website at ethicalsociety.org. Thank you for your generosity and we'll now receive your gifts and the continued gifts of music. My heart is ready and what am I gonna do? My heart is ready and what am I gonna do? My heart is ready and what am I gonna do? Oh, my heart is ready and what am I gonna do? So I would love for those who are able and willing to stand because to really sing this song right, you need to stand because you need to do the movement and get your hips involved. It's really easy. We're going to sing it, then we're going to finish the service, and then we're going to sing it again as our, our closing words because we're going to sing that to each other. But So it's really simple. My heart is ready, and what am I going to do? My heart is ready, and what am I gonna do? My heart is ready, and what am I gonna do? Oh, my heart is ready, and what am I gonna do? All right, I almost saw you. You need to step out a little bit into the hip, right? It's oh, once more. Oh, see, isn't that cool? Feels good to sing. We'll do it one more time, then we'll finish up with all the good things that Judy has for us. My heart is ready and what? My heart is ready and what am I gonna do? My heart is ready and what am I gonna do? Oh, my heart is ready and what am I gonna do? Judy, have a seat. Thank you. Thank you to all of the people who helped create this morning's time together. Thank you to our staff, including Linda Izari, Endara Miles, Robin Kravitz, Maceo Thomas, Tom Hutton, and the interim leader, Lynn Cox. Thank you to interim music coordinator, Leah Morris, and to the West Chorus for live music. <laughs> Thank you to John and Abby Dakin, who created our slides. Thanks to Joe London for hosting the upcoming virtual coffee hour. Thank you to Zoom chat usher Joe Klein and tech team members extraordinaire John Lika and John Pfeiffer and uh, assisted by Levi and where did she go? Well, and Denise as well. Um, um let's see who else who else who else thank you to our in-person greeters alex abbott and donna taylor yay at the conclusion of the platform please join us for social hour in person around the foyer and on the patio or virtual coffee hour on zoom or we'll see if we can bring the zoom coffee hour outside let's see how the weather is um, to get to virtual coffee hour, after closing words, point your browser to tiny.cc slash West Coffee Hour, all one word. And thanks also to those who are leading and supporting our work in the weeks to come. You can find information about opportunities to connect in the Sunday links or news and notes emails that you got earlier this week. However, here is some of the latest news. Uh, Sunday Ethical Action for Kids, or SEEK, is looking toward the fall. The enthusiasm of volunteers will be highly determinative of what programs West can offer in the new school year. 
please contact SEEK coordinator Andara Miles to find out more about ethical education. Very important piece of the puzzle. This afternoon at four o'clock, members should plan to tune in by Zoom for the spring membership meeting when board elections will take place and members vote on the budget for the coming fiscal year. This meeting will be entirely by Zoom and please check your email for important information about this meeting. We come together each week for hybrid platform with attendees both online and in person and those who wish to attend platform in person should RSVP at tiny.cc slash platform reservation. In-person attendees will also need to bring their vaccination card or a picture of their vaccination card. Online attendance will continue to be available for the foreseeable future. And you are always welcome to tune in by Zoom. And as Lynn mentioned, join UUSJ and interim leader Lynn Cox at the Poor People's Campaign Moral March this Saturday, June 18th. We will call for an end to racism, systemic poverty and inequality, ecological devastation and the war economy. We will meet at 930 at 4th Street Northwest and Pennsylvania Avenue. RSVP using the link that was included in news and notes or we'll also be putting it in the Zoom chat. There is a lot going on um, and you can see the calendar with upcoming events on the West website. We will also, uh, Trang is going to offer us a board update in person right here, right now. <laughs> Um, uh, and do you want to use from, from up here? That's right. Podium, podium. Okay. Podium it is. I get the podium today. All right. Thank you, Judy. And, um, I just want to say thank you again to Kimberly Davis, Davis and the chorus for a wonderful platform today. I love the music, um, and sharing that, singing with you all. Um, again, my name is Trang Duong, she, her. I'm currently on the board of trustees and your, um, current board president. And, um, oh, thank you. Um, so as you have known this past uh, board year, we've been doing either board video blogs, um, either in video or um, more recently live in the main hall. That's why I stand in front of you. And I hope they've been helpful just to keep you abreast of what's been going on and what the board has been up to. Uh, first of all, just a reminder again, the spring membership meeting is today at four, all virtual. Um, it does include board elections. There are four open seats, including uh, myself and Abby, who are rerunning, and then we have two open seats, and we'll do a supplemental election for that. So please uh, look at that email, check it out, and we'll be reviewing and approving the, gen uh, the budget, of course, and more. Um, uh, and we are doing elections because we're... Um, filling two seats left by our outgoing trustees, Rajesh and Vincent. So I want to thank them so much for their service to the board. Um, yay. And also um, welcoming, um, hopefully, our new trustees um, once that happens. OK, so um, coming up, we have the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association, the UUA General Assembly is coming up from June 22nd to 26th. Your West delegates are going to be myself, Robin Kravitz, and Sonia Coopers. Um, and, uh, and then there's also the AEU, American Ethical Union um, Assembly. Their business meeting is on Saturday, June 20, July 23rd with some workshops and meetings prior to that date. And your West delegates are gonna be John Dakin, Sonia Coopers, and myself. Um, and so as you, just for um, new folks, just as a, and for reminders for um, longtime members, uh, West is affiliated with both of these national organizations, the AEU and the UUA. So um, in particular, there's a lot of stuff going on with the AEU, um, some staff, kind of reorganizations, and, um, and so uh, we'll keep you abreast of what's going on there, okay? Um, I'm sure you're all excited to know that um, uh, we did approve a, a, a new settled leader, uh, Casey Slack, and they will be starting August 2nd. So, um, 
And uh, in the meantime, there is a communication team who is working with them just to kind of, you know, uh, lay the framework for when they start. And uh, if you have any questions, please communicate with us. That would include myself as board president, Tom Hutton as staff, and uh, Julie Grimes as the former um, member of the, the leader search committee. Uh, also, just a, a quick thing. Um, we have been working on policies. That's part of our uh, job as the board, and we approve the video policy um, by the safety team. Cameras have been or will be installed in the building, and it was approved by the board. Um, uh, two more things. One is, you know, volunteers are really important. Obviously, we appreciate our staff at West, but volunteers are kind of the heart and soul of what needs to happen here at West. So please, if you're interested in anything, um, please reach out. There is a volunteer opportunities sheet um, that you can access to look at and see what there's around or, you know, what are your interests? Where, 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 where can we plug you in? Because we really need to, uh, we need your support as volunteers at West. And lastly, um, just um, as Lynn said earlier, and I was like, oh, outgoing interim senior leader. So uh, they will be leaving us at the end of the month. Um, and um, their last platform is actually next Sunday. So, you know, please tune in for that. Either come to the main hall or, um, uh, sign, you know, uh, get onto Zoom for that, please. Um, and um, by the way, if you missed any secret, wink, wink, messages about their goodbyes and um, saying thanks, please contact me. Okay, um, I can't say any more because Lynn is in the hall. <laughs> and uh, that's it from the board. Thank you. What was that link? link? Thank you, Trang. Um, and uh, speaking of secrets, um, there will be more singing next week at the platform. Uh, music, music, good music. Anyway, all right. So. A few brief messages as we close. Reminders, if you're new to our community, please send an email to our membership coordinator, Maceo Thomas, and introduce yourself, maceot at ethicalsociety.org. And that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Well. Let us sing, remember, sing lustily and with good courage. Affirm who you are and whose you are. Sing together. Go forth because our hearts are ready. So what are we going to do? Let's go figure it out. So I invite you to sing if you need to leave. I know it's been a long platform, but thank you for sticking with us. Um, but rise look at each other, sing, and don't forget to move your hips. Because <laughs> my heart is ready, and what am I going to do? My heart is ready, and what am I going to do? My heart is ready, and what am I going to do? Oh, my heart is ready, and what am I going to do? My mind. My mind is ready, what am I going to do? My mind is ready, and what am I going to do? My mind is ready, and what am I going to do? Oh, my mind is ready, and what am I going to do? My spirit, my spirit's ready, and what am I my spirit's ready, and what am I going to do? My spirit's ready, and what am I going to do? Oh, my spirit's ready, and what am I going to do? My voice, my voice is ready. My voice is ready, and what am I going to do? My voice is ready, and what am I going to do? Oh, my voice is ready, and what am I going to do? Go forth. Go in love, go in joy, go in peace, go in song. I invite you to join me in our closing words for the month. Let us go into the week ahead with compassion, 
understanding and commitment, celebrating our interdependence for our hearts and for our quest for a better world. Thank you everyone for being here.